you on time for New Vision TV News. I am Ruth Nasaje. Now, he makes fun of nearly everything in life, but when it comes to HIV, popular comedian Kenneth Chumuli Pablo drops the jokes. The pandemic claimed both his parents' life and four of his siblings. In a very personal, revealing story, Pablo tells us how HIV changed his life and the worldview. Bang and fair bright colors, fancy clothes, luxury and life. Afros, my man. You cannot mention Uganda's top comedians and miss listing Pablo among the top three. And on his jokes, you have laughed and loved him. However, behind the brain that makes us wash away our pain, stress and even troubles is a heart that hides the pain of lost both parents and siblings to HIV AIDS. He was only 10 when his father died of AIDS-related sicknesses, followed by his mother. And five years later, four of his nine siblings followed still from the same illness. At Tangaza Arts in Makere, Chikumi Chikumi, Pablo has opened a center to train young people, including those living with HIV, in different skills. On a mildly sunny Monday afternoon, the popular comedian gave us a sneak peek into his dramatic life. I was born in Imbala Hospital at the time. My mother was the district commissioner and uh, spent there just like a year or two. Then we came back to Kololo, and that is, was on Awampeo Avenue. Where we stayed, my mother was uh, working with the, the, the judiciary at the time. And then in 1988, when bad luck chose, my dad closed the chapter in 1988. And uh, that's when I started my transition from urban to rural. I tell you, rural urban is okay, but urban rural is crazy because there's a lot of cultural shock that you get to experience along the way. And, uh, but for me, I, I was lucky that I was meant, I was taken up when my father died in 1988. We had been pampered, you know, we had been pampered. They used to drive us to school. We were from an affluent can home and uh, everything was at our, at our, our bake and call. We had a silver spoon in the mouth and when he, my father died in 1988, it started our transition from grace to grass. Even though he did not live with them for long, Chimuli talks about his parents with special fondness. My father would tell you three stories in one. It's up to you to decide which one to follow. You know, that kind of thing. And I think I pick it from him. And I think he would, think far, he would speak faster than he would think, you know. And, and then... He, oh, he had a passion for, for, for rally cars. He was very, he was, they call them, I think, pace setters. The guys who drive before the rally cars. That was him. He, he used to do it for the late Jimmy Dean and Frank Nekusa. He used to do it for Sam Sally and Eddie Crane's Kayua. So he was always there. I remember he had a Datsun. It was UWZ902. And he was always there. He loved football. He was a KCC fan. He had these caps written on Kasasiro style. Every time there was a match and Nachivubo KCC is playing, I used to tag along, and, and that was my, that's how I got to meet the guys like uh, Higeni, the late Higeni, Philip Omondi. And, and on the other side, my mom was, was laid back. She was an academician. She was very passionate about books. But she loved laughing. She loved laughing extremely. Her, her laughter was so loud. So she was so blessed she couldn't contain it. In the days when his father succumbed to HIV, the disease was shrouded in mystery. It took him a while to know that it was the dreaded pandemic that had stolen his beloved mother and father. I got to learn about my, my parents' status, actually when they had passed on, yeah? But I think my father died in 88. And you know, at that time, HIV it was like a myth. It was obscure. People thought it was, it was preconceived as witchcraft. It was never, you know, it didn't, people were not informed about uh, HIV. And those days, I think uh, the, the medication was rare. It was hard to get medication because I remember seeing my dad eating lots of purples and I was like, man, I love this medication. Anyhow, I, I got to learn about my father. When my father died in 88, I never got to know what killed him uh, because I was, I was young. But again, nobody was willing to tell us, you know. They said, you know, he had a headache, he closed the chapter. And we also closed that chapter. But then, I later got to know in the, the early 90s, one of my, my aunties uh, told me that, look here, you, you know, I think she noticed that I was a little bit naughty and said, hey, guy, if you continue like this, you're going to follow your father's footsteps, you're going to get uh, mm, HIV. And that's when I realized that, ah, he had died, he had succumbed to the, the, uh, the scourge. 
Little remains of Pablo's parents' legacy, but his mother's final words will always remain with him. I went there to see her. She calls me to her deathbed and says, I look here, my son, I think uh, the party is over, I'm done with you. But I just need you to respect your uncle. Respect your uncle. Uh, he's, he's now your new father. He's going to take care of you. Um, respect everyone regardless of uh, their status and what they are doing. And for me, that's what I, I that's, what, that's when I, I smelt a rat. That's when I smelt a rat. The death of his dear ones from HIV left such a huge scar in his life. For me, my parents' death, well, well first of all, when I lost my sibling, the one who followed me, here's a, here's a girl who died a virgin. She, she was born with, with the virus and she lived for only up to 14 years and she died. So she, she died, she, she paid a price for something she had no idea about. She, wasn't, she had a whole life ahead of her, but it was cut short and it wasn't, there's no one to blame. I, I can't blame my parents because at the time they also uh, didn't know what they were doing. I mean, it was an, an, unexpected. And then my elder sibling, also one of them close, my two siblings also died. And for me it was, how come? Is this a generational curse? Is it a family curse? What's happening? And for me, what happened to me is, I realized that, you know what? We have to stand out. Because this thing seems to be engulfing us. It's, it's like an amoyo bar. And for me, I, 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 I made a decision that, you know what? Let's follow the script. Let's follow the script of what does it take to survive uh, this scourge. And, and for me, that's every time I remember, every time I remember my mom on her deathbed, I look at the pale face, her pale face wrinkled, uh, bones were all sunken with her eye, her, her eyes, the ball sockets with the, the eyes extremely wide, like never before with the curly black hair that was falling off in installments. That image, when I look at it, it, it sends a cold chill down my spine and tells me, you know what, you have to save people from this stuff. That's why up to this day, I, I chose that I don't want somebody to go through that kind of thing. It's now 29 years down the road, they are dead. I think if there was a job that once experienced in being an orphan, I think I would qualify. <laughs> it also divided the rest of the family. I think their death was was like like the Titanic when the Titanic hit the iceberg, they didn't see it coming, and 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 it wrecked the entire ship. That's what happened to us. We we're a family of nine, and when my parents died, we were all divided amongst relatives, friends, and in-laws. So w once we were divided, that the family was totally divided. That means we were raised differently. I went to Mbaya. Uh, some of my sisters were, some remained in Kampala, others went to Masindi, others, you know, it was, were thrown away. Pablo's life experience has taught him to value fidelity and stay loyal to his marriage vows and to negotiate the risk traps that his job sets. To man, and so I always keep away from those gray areas. When I smell there's danger here, I, I'd rather run away. I, I, avoid, that's, I, I try to make sure that I'm cautious about the environment. I am in uh, and given our kind of lifestyle and a kind of job it exposes you to to opportunities of mischief so I try to make sure that I am sensitive to them and I run away at the mere smell of danger sometimes it is difficult especially when it is in the line of work so how does Pablo handle attention from his female admirers I can sense it I can't, I can't say once, twice or three times, but uh, especially when we have international shows, when we travel out of Uganda, oh my goodness, there it's crazy to a point that even at times uh, the organizers of the event think that maybe it's part of the package at times and they don't, they don't find you, they find you crazy that you don't want to have an escort. So it's, it's, it's how you play with it. You never see it coming, but somehow it comes. It may come in a subtle way, it may come in a bold way, but you see the eyes don't lie, you can sense, yes. 
Pablo's family experience with HIV has left a huge impression on him, inspiring him to play his part in changing lives. By being a public figure, and for me I said I need to add value to people's life. What else can I do? And, and for me I chose to talk about HIV and, and the plight to stop it, to move it to zero infection because I, I have seen what has happened and so doing I partnered with friends uh, one of my friends Barbara Kemgisa we partnered with Peel Power Uganda to make sure that we we bring HIV to the end and I decided to, to create a space Tangaza Art Center where we have young people who are HIV positive who can come interact and get encouragement it is worse knowing that you're living with the virus, but it is heartbreaking to know that your beloved ones will not see tomorrow after HIV AIDS related illnesses grab them away from you. But no matter the outcome, we are winning the battle together. This report was compiled by Steven Senkaba for New Vision TV. Moving on, the police have confirmed that three people died in violent clashes between them and the Boda Boda cyclists in Ajumani town on Tuesday evening. The standoff started at 3 p.m. when the cyclists stormed Ajuman police station demanding for a lease of a suspected thief who stole a motorcycle and planned to lynch him. The police responded by firing in air and according to Josephine Anguchir, the police spokesperson for West Nile region, a stray bullet killed Michael Anyama the vice chairman of the Border Border Group. Now in other news, Gloria Nawanyanga, ambassador of Uganda Network for Young People Living with HIV AIDS, has urged people, especially the youth, to appreciate themselves. The 21-year-old student pursuing a Bachelor of Law at Uganda Christian University Mukono was born HIV positive. However, this has not stopped her from achieving her dreams and encouraging youth and young people to live positively. She advises youth living positively to take their drugs well and live healthy lives so that they can achieve more than they can dream of and think about. And in our sports news, SC Villa captain Bernard Mwanga held failed teammates and technical team for their tremendous performance in their ZAM Uganda Premier League. Mwanga was on the score sheet as Villa beat Masamvu 3-0 on Tuesday to open a five-point lead on the table, believes their hard work paid off. Villa last won a league title in 2004, but now they are doing well after winning eight of their last ten games. The other two games have ended in stealth. They top the league with 28 points, 5 above joint second KCCA and police. SC Villa's next match will be against Proline at Massacre Recreation Stadium on December 19th. You're still watching New Vision TV and in our Daily Pal of Africa series, we take a look at the Guinea fowl. Now, the Guinea fowl birds are commonest in Africa and rank among the oldest of the heavy-bodied ground-feeding birds. Guinea fowls are social and there are reasons why you should have it as part of your menu. Many know that the only bath that must be feasted on is chicken. But did you know that even this guinea of hull can be a very good supplement at your dinner? The heavy bodied bird has black feathers with so many white dots all over them. The guinea fowl is a domestic animal, very social and above all very delicious. It feeds on small insects food, seeds, and sometimes it picks very tiny stones. These birds can be found in people's homesteads or with market vendors who sell birds. For more Pearl of Africa stories, visit our website www.newvision.co.ug. Our newspaper, The Sun Division, is also another home of adventures, so get your copy every Sunday for more Pearl of Africa stories.
And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of news updates on your mobile phone, on your desktop, on your tablet, and anywhere on the go by visiting our website www.newvision.co.ug. I am Ruthie Naseje.